This week's Strava Insights, the TCS New York City Marathon held last Sunday, November 5th, 2017. 50,000 people completed this marathon. That's a massive number. Of the Strava stats, I have 5,389 data points, which equates to about 10% of all participants or all finishers in the event, so quite a good sample size. Okay, onto the numbers. First up, over to the GPS and brands used for people to track their runs with. Garmin, 75.5%. Huge, huge number there from Garmin, but that's to be expected, they're always quite high. Strava mobile app comes in at second place there, 12.6%. And when we dive into the next slide showing you the actual numbers of which mobile, the iPhone carries that number all that way high. Third was unlisted. So these are devices that aren't known by Strava or just don't show up in people's activities. That's an interesting one. And then we have the rest, Sunto, Apple, Polar, Fitbit, etc. So interesting to see Apple at 2.1%, quite high, but US market, yet yeah, not to be unexpected, I would think. Okay, onto the GPSs themselves, the actual units, 4Runner 235, number one, 16.1%. The Strava iPhone app is 11%. And as I said before, that's carried that number up high because the Android iPhone app for Strava is only at 1.6%. And as to be expected, Garmin dominates all the specific devices there. The 235, 920 XT, 735, uh, and the 935 is sort of slowly rising up the ranks as well. So 5.4% on this little unit here. Huge opportunity there for someone else to come along and challenge Garmin. Please, can someone have a crack at it at least? Okay, on to the other statistics. Shoes. Now, shoes is an interesting one because it requires people to enter the shoe data themselves manually on their Strava profiles. Now, as soon as you start getting humans entering data, you get problems. It's better when it's automated. However, we do have around 1,900 data points on shoes. Number one place there, well, the top three are very close. Well, ASICS takes number one. Brooks, Nike or Nike, depending on where you're from. Ciccone, Adidas or Adidas. Um, and the others then start falling off from there. But the top three well-known brands... Well, I guess if you're a runner, they're all well-known brands. But for me, I know Asics, Brook, Nike, Ciccone, Adidas, Hocker. I'm not a runner, so I don't know that brand. Maybe even mispronouncing it. New Balance. And then Mizuno. I'm going to be slaughtered for mispronouncing that, I'm sure. But anyway, data is all linked below on gplama.com if you want to have a look at the full thing after this video. Gender breakdown, 66.5% male, 28.2% female, 5.3% unlisted. So around... Two thirds male sample size that I have for here. Onto the overall stats, and I think these are probably the most interesting ones. It shows you how to be just average, well, an average awesome marathon finisher, but in the middle of the bell curve. Overall heart rate monitor usage, 61.64% average heart rate, 159 beats a minute average pace, 552 per kilometer, or in freedom units, 926 per mile. Average finishing time is four hours, seven minutes, 32 seconds. But even more interesting, we'll split that out to male and female. Male heart rate monitor usage there, 64.47% heart rate monitor usage, average heart rate 157, average pace 540 per kilometer or 907 per mile. Average finishing time for the males, 359.06, just under the four hour mark. That's pretty significant. I think everyone was probably aiming to come in under the four hours and the average person came under the four hour mark. Pretty cool to see. The winning time, now these are the outliers, literally the outliers. Two hours, 10 minutes, 53. Average pace of 3.06 per kilometer or under five minutes per mile, so 4.59 per mile. That's flying. The women, almost as fast, really. It's unbelievably how quick the women's winner was. Anyway, onto the averages for the women. Heart rate monitor usage, 54.61%. So heart rate monitor usage, about 10% down on the males. Average heart rate, up a little from the males. So 162 beats. Average pace, 620 per kilometer, or 1011 per mile. Average finishing time, 427.14. So my guess, again, not a runner, not a marathoner, that a lot of the female athletes aim for four and a half hour finish time. And the average beat that. Good to see. The winning female time. First American winner in, was it 40 years, I believe? First American female winner in 40 years. Two hours, 26, 53. Average pace of 3.28 per kilometer, 5.36 per mile. Just astounding stats there. On to the summary pace distribution there. The average finishing times uh, are indicated in this graph that you can see here. 
I've actually had a look at the TCS website, which look at all the data from all the New York marathons, and look, the data from the official results is very similar, indicating that what we're pulling out of Strava here, pretty accurate. Good to see. And the last bit of data I'll look at today is what I call device on pace. So I'll categorize runners, male and female together, in different minute bins, and what devices are they using? Well, for the three minutes to 3.59 or faster, um, the forerunner 2.35, the forerunner 9.35, four minute pace, again, four minutes to 4.59, per kilometer that is, not per mile, is the forerunner again, five minute pace, 2.35 again, six minute pace, 2.35 again, but the iPhone's now starting to show. And we see a trend for the next one as well, where the iPhone bumps up a little bit. So the slower you go, the more likely you'll be having an iPhone. And on the last group, the eight minute pace or above, the iPhone takes the cake there with 19%. So very interesting to have a look at those stats and what groups are using what hardware. All this data is over on gplama.com. So if you wanna nerd out on all the stats, links below to all that. But to be average, that's what it takes to run the New York Marathon, male and female. And if you wanna be very average, grab yourself a Formula 235 as well. Okay, thanks for watching, we'll see you soon.